Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. A uh, couple weeks ago, one of my uh, viewers wrote in to me that lives local, and they're in Monmouth County, New Jersey, and they have a really cool fifth wheel that they want to give a tour of today. And I haven't featured a fifth wheel on a channel, uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Andy, welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. Man, this thing is huge. Welcome to our seasonal site. Uh, so this is our Jayco Eagle HT 30.5 MBOK. It does seem very big for your channel, but um, hopefully it will fit in with your viewers. Um, we camp a lot. We have our set up here at our house. We call it our seasonal site. This trailer has become, or fifth wheel has become part of our house. We use it all the time. Um, it's about 37 foot long and approximately 12 foot six tall, I think. Uh, depends on when we were actually hooked up to the truck, it is a little bit taller. So right now it stands at about 12 foot six. Um, come on in, I'll give you a tour. So this is our living area and kitchen. Um, we have two opposing slides. We came from the travel trailer life where with one small slide, my husband wanted something with a little more elbow room as he called it. Um, we have two boys, we got two dogs, we bring a rabbit <laughs> and we really fill this thing up. We also camp with a lot of friends and our trailer just kept getting really, really crowded. So we were looking for something with a little more room and this worked out for us. I love the big window back here. I wanted a recliner. That was on my must-have list. Love my recliner. Love the big window. Um, because of this window, I do try to book sites where I have really nice views. So sometimes those sites are, I book out like a year in advance. Um, if I know like Bar Harbor, Maine, I get that waterfront site and I know that's the view right there. So um, I do research sites. I do that in advance so we really get to uh, utilize this view. This window goes up too so really when you're standing here it's like you're outside. Um, we have the table here with the L-shaped couch. This works really well for the kids. I have some folding chairs back in under the bed if we need them. If it's a rainy day we're at the campground a bunch of people are here we put the chairs here. All the kids sit around here we can play games and I love that. We have the TV um, it's the magic TV. My kids, for some reason, watch TV when we're camping. They love flipping through the channels. They never watch it at home. We have a fireplace. That was another part of the um, thing I needed to get um, to switch from our travel trailer to the fifth wheel. This fireplace I use all the time. I actually use this whole area as a photo studio. I'm a photographer. So I actually bring people in. Well, it's not COVID, but I do a backdrop and I actually do headshots in here. I do family portraits, I do Christmas, I set up a whole stage in here. I do product photography, so I use this as my studio. So I keep this fireplace, it keeps me nice and warm. And then, um, what else do you have in here? So this is our bed, um, or our couch. This turns into a bed. Our son. Um, we actually do have a bedroom, we'll get to that, but it's very easy to turn into a bed. He sleeps out here for some reason, um, but it's not a big deal. It just pops out just like that. Put that there, and then those two couches come back on. And what I love about this, I can still access everything. I still can get to the fridge, I can still be here still be at the table, the dogs can still run around, I can feed the dogs in the morning, and that's out of the way. So um, his requirement when he wakes up is he has to put it away. So very easy. I love um, how this works out. I also usually leave a um, sheet on here. So when the kids are all on here, it doesn't mess up the couch. I keep the extra sheets up here. We have plenty of storage for games and um, arts and crafts and things like that. Up here, I have an issue, and this is something I like to come to your channel for. I have, we have storage up over 
that side of the kitchen, and that's an internal wall. So the temperature doesn't really change in the cabinets up here. It is hot as anything in these cabinets. So if I put bread, if I put rolls, they will go moldy, they will go stale. Um, if I put anything that will melt, it melts. So I've been trying to figure out what to switch this glass out with. Um, so that's my project this fall. I want to be able to vent it. So usually when we're camping, it's not pretty, but I keep them open. So even if I have to put a mesh um, in there or whatever, it'll at least keep the more, I'll have more storage. This is the slide. So if you see the nice detail, the woodworking is really nice. Um, that's on both of the sides. And then we have the refrigerator. This, um, we use our camper all season. Um, this is kind of like my extra storage out here. Uh, it's usually always full. We're usually ready to leave at any time. I always keep it running the whole season. I never turned it off. And um, recently we just had a power outage, so we were running on propane. So that saved us. Again, we have the oven. I have the roof. The AC is on. The oven is not on, but if it's the fall or early spring, we do use this quite a bit. It helps warm it up in here. I have a little tray table. That's nice. And then I keep all of our ketchup, mustards, and things like that. And we have the can vent right out to the outside. So one of the things that issues with this slide is that I do not fill the fridge completely while it is out. I feel like the motor will not come back in with all of the weight. So that's the only time. Other than that, the slides are always out when we're at the house. Otherwise there's gaps and I find that critters get in. We get bugs and stuff. So I keep the slides out. Uh, this oh I have oh one more of the kitchen we have a fancy residential style um, faucet there might be a little water in there it does even have a spray feature um, we have lots of drawers plenty of storage completely unorganized as I am so all of our goodies are in there and then I don't put food in here because if we bring the slide in this is the only thing I can't access when we're traveling. So if there's anything in here, I, I can't get to it when we're, when we're away. Up here, we have again more storage. We have this microwave. Up here, extra room paper towels. And then more room for stuff. But like I said, this is where I put my rolls and all that. So um, this is our water system. Our water, our water system is very high tech. <laughs> Um, I stopped using filters. I ended up using this. I kept carrying jugs and jugs of water, but we go hike, we go camping, and we were just up in Lake Placid. We are driving up over mountains. I try to keep the weight down in here as much as possible. So I started using this. Absolutely love it. Been using it all season. You can just refill it, and I'm not carrying extra weight. We have our thermostat right here that controls our air conditioning and our heating. We have two air conditioners on this unit. When we ordered this unit, we had two put in. One is up here on the other side and then one's in the master bedroom. We recently just had problems with this on our last trip. And um, I was really, really glad we had the unit in the master bedroom. So if you have the option of getting two air conditioner units, get two because if one goes bad, it's nice to be able to turn on the other one. Um, what's really nice is, like I said, we just had the power outage. I would be able to come out here. I have my cords and I can plug in my phone and charge my phone. We do have a solar panel that does charge our battery. So um, if we don't have power, don't have shore power, we can still come out here and charge things. We have our control panel. Very, very easy to access. Up here we have the control for all of our slides. I can check all of our and my battery and my water and of course these lie because <laughs> we have nothing in them. Um, we have our electric water heater at the LP gas, our water pump, and then we have all the slide controls here. We also have this little remote. So as I'll show you when we get to the outside, I can turn this on. We get to sites where I don't know, I, I'm blind on putting the slides out and I can control it with the remote and watch them and make sure I don't hit the trees. 
<laughs> I usually send the kids out. Um, I got our light control off and on. It's a touch. This is the kids' room. This is the bunk house. Um, we have plenty of storage up above. I keep their hiking backpacks and things in there. There's hardly anything in there. I have raincoats. Um, we have the top bunk and the lower bunk. My son uses the lower bunk. My other one, who now uses the pull-out couch, um, has abandoned the upper bunk. So the upper bunk becomes a storage <laughs> center. Uh, I bought this here. This is a from, I think it was from Target or Costco. This works for all their clothes. They can reach them easily, put them in and out. I put lots of command hooks up. We were recently just camping at a place that has the pool open late, so the kids will put on their robes and come back and forth. We have more storage up here. I have more storage than they would ever need. Can I ask a question? This slide, when it comes in, is this bedroom still usable? Um, so this bed, is this part here, it actually slides in, it's a little bit shorter. And then this comes, so these become even, and it comes right up to here. You can crawl in here. I had this actually in when the power went out. My son was like, I'm still going to sleep out there. So you can. You can still access it. It's just up to the door here. I just lay this right on the bed, and then we pull it in. And underneath, I'm able to fit um, folding tables and things like that. Rabbit cages, you know, the essentials. Uh, this is our master bedroom. I'll talk about it later, but we had a tree fall on this, and this was actually down, like here. <laughs> um, all the AC unit and all that, so you can imagine that. It was scary. But we have storage uh, to the right and left of the beds. Um, it has plenty of room for, we have like again, raincoats. We, we do a lot of hiking, so we keep all of our, like, our hiking shoes and things like that down in here. Um, over here, again, we have the USB chargers, another charging port, and the plugs. Those are very convenient. And then on this side, I have a plug too. And then I keep like my sweatshirts in here. I have, um, again, my hiking stuff is down in here and flip flops. And then we have, again, they have the millwork. This is that slide again with the custom, with the nice millwork. This little unit works well. I have one drawer for my clothes, and that's plenty for me. Um, I have my knitting here. I tend to put uh, my laptop right here. I have plugs right here, and I have a light. So I do a lot of photo editing while we're away, and this works as a little desk for me, and I really, really like it. And if we go on a really long trip, I have a, the storage, like these drawers, that just sits there. So if we go on a two-week trip, I put it there. We have the nice blinds. And the one nice thing about this is we have a window here and then an opposing window on the other side. So the wind, it's really nice. The breeze will come right through, especially if we're camping near the beach. I absolutely love how it goes through. We had a TV here, but a tree fell on our camper and it's gone and I have not replaced it. We never used it. But we have a thermostat here for a second air conditioning unit. Um, like you can see, this one's really loud, so I prefer not using it, but we, we did keep this closed. If you open it up, you know, all the airs in this room, if we close it, it does push it through the rest of the camper, and it even fills the kids' bunkhouse, which is really nice. Keeps them nice and cool. Um, under the bed, we have storage. I have a table we put outside. I got the ice maker. I got drying racks. I got a fan, rafts, lanterns. This again, we can access all of this even when we're traveling. There's usually a lot of booze under there <laughs> before we go away. That's the money we'll... Um, again, we have storage. This is what my husband's stuff is in. This is actually like a shoe container. Um, I put it together in here. It makes it easy. It's kind of similar to the kids' setup. You can see where everything is. Keeps it organized. And then if we come in the bathroom... We have the nice big shower. A big thing I wanted was a real drain. 
so the water actually goes down. Um, our old travel trailer had a little mesh ring. These two are slide. We open the clothes. And we did upgrade our shower head. I like that we have the, the skylight in the bathroom, so it keeps it bright in here. Um, lots of headroom. Um, this fan we had upgraded um, when the tree came and knocked it out. Um, the guy who repaired it for us put this one on it. I love this unit. You can hear it. I'm going to put it on. It is so quiet. So it's really, really nice. We really like this. That's a really, really nice piece. That's the Max fan. Um, then over here, this is the sliding door to give the privacy to the master bedroom. And then we have plenty of storage in here for all of our stuff. We're ready to go. Any minute. So when we um, pull this slide in, this is our this is our first slide. This comes right up to here. So we can still access the bathroom when we're traveling. What we've been doing on all of our trips this year, the kids have not been going in anywhere. We just run in the hallway, we can get to the to the toilet. Um, and we got lots of storage under here. I keep this gallon jug because after we dump it, I um, when we're leaving the campground, I fill it with that much water. I put the drop-in, one of the drop-ins, and we don't have any problems with stink and smell and all of that. I leave a little bit in case emergency on the road and we need to flush. So that's handy to have. We have this, our sink works really well. Our mirror works terrible. Um, we need new magnetic catches. Anything I put in here will be on the floor when we get to the campground. So that needs to be updated. It has cool lights around the edge. So it is really nice at night to just be able to keep that on and the kids can come in and out. Um, this little doohiggy I got at on Amazon for our toothbrushes. I really like this. Um, keeps them organized and not flying around the camper. Um, what else do we have We have all of our hats, command hooks everywhere. <laughs> Very important. Got my husband's back here. So another thing that we wanted was the outdoor kitchen. Um, this is our grand outdoor kitchen. Now it's not much, but it's it's great because we can plug in our phones and our chargers. We have a speaker here. And if we we're gonna leave the campsite for the day, we can just put the door down and lock it and not have to worry about it. So the function of it is wonderful. Um, a mini fridge, I just saw these beers are really cold. <laughs> I would like to have one. Um, they're almost iced up. So mini fridge is great. And we keep another cooler under here. We have Furion outdoor speakers that are controlled from inside. We never use them. We just use this speaker most of the time. Um, the stairs. We have the regular traditional stairs here, um, and then we did not, the, the new fancy ones that fold up weren't available when we got these, but these work great. I tied the dog leashes up to here. These are great stairs. The tires are the 16 inch Goodyear, American made, made in the USA. We've been very, very happy with them. So it was wired for solar. We did um, add the solar. Um, like I said, there's one panel. I'll show you that. We had a drawer here. Um, I sent it to my dad to get, we, it was a grill. We took the grill out because we used a Blackstone and we never, we haven't replaced it yet. Working on it. Um, this is where we have our Blackstone grill. So we have a propane hookup right underneath here. It's right there. And then there's one in the back. So depending on our site, um, we will either put the Blackstone here and grill or we put it at the back of the camper. Just depends on our view and how the campground's laid out. This is a quick connect hose. In theory, it should work. It doesn't work that great. <laughs> yeah, I haven't put it in a while. Oh, it's so slimy. Um, but so right here, we were filling up the dog water and doing all that. It is convenient if we are camping like in Myrtle Beach somewhere and the kids have sandy feet, they're constantly, we just go right here and they just wash their feet off. 
Typically, um, when we're camping and it's sandy, it dries instantly. So people are like, I don't want a puddle right here. We've never had a puddle. This can be for a propane tank, but we use it for um, this, that, and the next thing. We usually throw the footballs and things in here. I keep the suntan lotion. We have the stuff for the dogs, the dog tie-ups. Um, it's a very handy little spot right there. We have, I'll show you the Moride. This was an upgrade. We did get the Moride, um, it was the rubber pin box. This was a, uh, this does, was an upgrade to the unit, um, but really, really, really makes a difference in the pooling. So highly recommend this as an upgrade. We've seen them without, and I realized how good ours was. Uh, lots of storage in the front. We got our compressor. Uh, here's our battery. We keep a bucket with our hoses in it. We have our tackle box up here. The BD40, other things that we um, need to access. There's lots of room. These are our leveling. Um, the legs right here are the controls. It's easy as anything up and down to um, get it level for the truck. And then for when we get to this site. These are our, we have two propane tanks. We run our Blackstone off of that most of the time. Like I, we were just at a campground, we had to run our propane water heater because the electric situation. We have a big storage here. We have a light in here. And then this would be our hookup for the, this is where we do our um, winterizing. There's a panel here. I have the cornhole boards in here, so I can't pull it out right now. We are mid-season. Um, but plenty of storage in here. We do put our chairs in there. I try not to overload it. We have a 50 amp hookup here at our house. So the seasonal site would not be complete without full power. So this works really, really nice. And then we have, again, that little quick connect hose. I have a second one that would hook up here. We have the heat and then um, I think there's a little light. And then this is the uh, fill tank for the city and then for our fresh water. And then there is a black tank flush here. And we use this thing um, after, as often as we can. When we set up at a campground, what we'll do is we put the hose here and it does clean out our black tank. So if we're at a site and we're hooked up here and have, we have a good flow line, we, we do do it. So we're, um, sometimes it's not a good connection. Now this is a big issue. <laughs> a lot of Jayco, um, I know not even just Jayco, but uh, the fifth wheels. This is not how it came from the factory. This we had redone. So we have two grays and one black. Um, and the levers are, we have one there, and then there's one back here, and then there's one here. So the other one's back by that wheel. So each one closes off, and when we were getting to the um, campground to set up for the hose, we took the cap off, and everything was dumping out. Totally embarrassing. People are sitting there. So we went back to the camp. We went back to where we got it from. We're like, this is the problem. And we're seeing it all the forums. This is the problem. Everybody's having this problem. So what they said was the condensation builds up on the two, on the, in the tubes. So by the time you open it again, whatever was left while you're driving comes out. So we had the system rebuilt. So you can see how the pipes come into here and we have the cut and we have the shut off here. So I guess the, um, so this works great. We never had a problem. So what you did was you had a wastegate added yeah. to the very end. To the very so end. So the, the other remote wastegates still work and operate, but this will prevent any residual waste from coming out when you take this cap off the snap on your waste hose. Yep. That's a great addition you did. Yeah, so we had bought an aftermarket one and we put it on there and that thing still fell off. So this thing is really, really, really secure. We send the pictures, we share this all the time with people because people want to rebuild theirs. Cause it's, it's a problem. I don't know why they haven't, haven't fixed that yet. So as you can see, this is a slide I was talking about. We do tend to get a little narrow into <laughs> trees. Um, we have a, I use the controller, I use the controller to bring this out. As you can see, we have on the three of these and on the other side, we do have the awning toppers. Um, we didn't, it didn't come with the awning toppers. We had them put on afterwards. Every time we left a campground, I was going up on the roof and sweeping off 
four slides, so I love the awning toppers. Um, and again, like I said, I leave the slides out all the time. The only time I bring them in is in snow. So if I have a photo shoot, I bring in, I'll bring in these two slides, but if the snow gets on it, pulls it down. But we had heavy rain today and it's totally fine. Most people don't realize how important these slide toppers are because yeah. any of the leaves that are on this tree right here that fall down will land on top of the box of the slide. And then when you bring the slide inside, you're bringing all that debris inside your trailer. Yeah. Then when you tow down the highway, things move around and now yeah. dirt and debris all over. So this is going to prevent that stuff from being brought inside your trailer. Uh, so I do highly recommend getting the slide toppers. Yeah, my concern was that and I thought it was going to add too much um, width to the outside of them because I did see them at the campgrounds. And it looks like it added like another six, nine inches off of them. And this is already big enough, um, but it really doesn't add much, much room to the, to the sides. Uh, let's see if we can access this. So I like how they have the water heater and the furnace all in this area because these areas get hot when they're on. Yeah. So if the kids are outside playing, it's on this side of the trailer and no one's going to lean on it accidentally no, or table, no. tablecloth won't get ignited. Nope, it's nice and contained. We have our chalks and our... We have to work on our leveling pad situation over here. When you're looking to buy an RV, if there is a refrigerator on the wall, um, we, I don't know if I can open these. It's been a while. <laughs> you have to edit that out. There we go. We put in the screening on the back of all these so we didn't get bugs and things crawling up into them. So that was something we did right away, um, so we didn't have to worry about critters. So this critters. is the, the back of the refrigerator we're looking at? Yep. Yeah. So I'll put that back in a minute. Um, coming around back, we do have the ladder, which is great access to the roof. I use it all, I had, used to use it all the time to sweep off the slides. Now I just use it on occasion. We do have a bike rack. Uh, the Yakima, I don't recommend this. We actually are able to keep, because of our two slides come in, we have a narrow section in there. We are able to put like an adult size bike in there, hoping to put two bikes in there. We are on the constant look for a new um, bike rack system. Um, those are our new leveling jacks. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Again, um, they go down, we have the remote for those. Um, these got destroyed when we had the tree fall on it. This, we keep our sewer hose in here. I'll show you this side. Um, we have camped for a long time, and we were those people that had a sewer hose like flying out of the back, flapping down the wind. <laughs> um, we got this, it's a magnetic um, catch. That was after one of our last trips. And that thing is holding it in place. And that's where we have the control for our jacks. We did go with this, um, with this the seamless glass. The tinted. So the difference between yeah. this is a non frameless glass and this is a frameless, frameless glass. Yeah. It gives it more of a modern streamlined look. Yeah, and it's really easy to clean. We use this thing a lot. It's dirty. <laughs> our awning, we love our awning. We have a nice big awning out here. Um, we're able to fit the grill into here, our chairs. We spend all of our time out here. If it's raining, thunder, lightning, we, we really don't go in. Um, the kids are inside. We usually put that table, which I had under the bed here, with our ice maker. We run um, our extra power cord over to the to the stand, and we run everything over here off of that. So we're not running everything off of the camper. Thank you for taking the time to give us a tour of your Jayco HT Eagle. And I just wanted to the viewers to understand why you chose something like this. When there's a lot of different types of RVs in the market, the Class A's, Class B's, C's, travel trailers, pop-ups, why you chose a fifth wheel? Well, I wanted a Class B. <laughs> um, my husband's here. Uh, he, we had a travel trailer. I grew up um, in a pop-up. My Growing up, we had a pop-up. We had travel trailers. Then my parents got a Class A. Um, we got into camping because friends of ours had a travel trailer. We started out with a destination trailer just to get to go camping. Um, we were just rented them right on the campground, and we were we were hooked. Um, we went out and bought a truck, a, 
uh, it was a ram, what, 1500 ram? Yeah, 1500 ram. And then we went and bought a uh, travel trailer, and it was about a 30 foot travel trailer, and we loved it, and we were using it all the time. And we realized we were it was really, we were kind of outgrowing it. I liked it because it was paid for, but he <laughs> he um, ended up getting a new truck. We, we upgraded to a Dodge Ram, or a Ram Mega Cab, a 2500 gas, 6.4 rear. Yeah, 6.4, it has the 410 rear gear axle ratio. Um, having the gas truck, it gave us a little more payload than a diesel truck would have. So we started looking for fifth wheels that would match that truck that we have. So what was the weight we were looking at? Like 10? Anything under 10,000 dry. Yeah. Know? And so this, we found this was 9,000, what, 9,000, like 900 yeah. dry, somewhere yeah. right around there. Yeah, so we wanted something that gave us more room, um, and we wanted something, I loved our travel trailer, I loved the layout of it, we had the bunks in it. Um, we wanted the bunks, but we found that we didn't have the living space in a lot of what was um, on the market. We went looking at travel trailers and everything seemed so similar to what we had in the floor plans, so that's what we decided to go to a fifth wheel. Our style of camping is we tend to go away for at least a week. Sometimes we're away 11 days. We're not really weekend warriors. Um, our kids are 11 and 12 right now and when we were buying this we were thinking well it would be nice to maybe if we had a seasonal site if the kids are playing football or baseball and we just can't do those longer trips we can have it somewhere set up and be very roomy and we'll be comfortable in it. Another issue we have with our house is we don't have a guest room and we have nowhere for anyone to stay. So people were, we were having like your sister, like your, they, everyone lives pretty far, so they come to visit, every, it's, they come to stay overnight or for the weekend. So they were staying in the travel trailer. So again, we were thinking we would like to have somewhere where if we have company, they can come and stay and be comfortable while staying at our house. Hence our seasonal site now that we were building in our house. So we were looking for something like that. It was a little bit more of like we could go on longer trips. Um, and we'd be very comfortable in it. We wouldn't feel cramped and we do camp with a lot of friends So we end up having all the kids in our, <laughs> our camper. So it's nice that we now have this um, For the room so the fifth wheels offered the more of the room than we found it in the travel trailers The other thing was we kept hearing it's so much better to pull a fifth wheel and over and over and over again, it was like the consensus, it's nice to pull a fifth wheel. And we've been pulling a travel trailer, and my parents have a class A, so I'm used to what that's like. And um, I, and so nobody just lets you drive a fifth wheel. <laughs> Nobody's like, oh, just pull it around, you'll know what it feels like. So we had to take people's word for it. And then um, as we were looking at, at all the different options, we decided this floor plan worked really, really well for our family. Um, we had figured that middle bunkhouse, we could always switch out and use it for storage, put kayaks in it. Um, maybe if the kids don't go camping with us anymore, it can be an office. It gives us a lot of flexibility. And like I said, the, the room, this room in here, um, I could use it for a studio. So we decided the fifth wheel, hopefully it'd be easier to pull, gave us more room. Um, I still want a class B. I want to live the van life. Well, first, <laughs> first, she wanted a class A, and I did not want a, I don't want a class A. I wanted to have a truck. I want. I like. I wanted to pull. I heard all yeah. good things about safer, easier to pull a fifth wheel, and it is. With yeah. the travel trailer, I was just watching side view mirror <laughs> the whole time, just watching the trailer go like this. With the fifth wheel, I forget it's behind. I don't even look. It just follows right behind me. Now the HT in the Jayco Eagle, isn't that stand for a half ton? Half ton. Why this did you go to a, a three quarter ton truck? Um, this you wouldn't be able to pull this with a half ton truck. It's because this fully loaded about twelve thousand pounds. I'm sure people do it, but I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah. want to pull it because now you're talking about the payload. My payload, my truck is. 2,650 pounds, and with the pin weight, which is, I calculate, like 15 pounds of this trailer fully loaded into that truck, it only gives me about another 700 pounds between us yeah. and the hitch and luggage and all the dogs. We had a great conversation with Jeremy from RV Atlas about payload, and then it raised a lot of eyebrows. At the end of the video, he has a travel trailer, and he has... Uh, a three-quarter ton truck and he has also has an Eagle HT that's told by half ton and uh, a lot of people don't pay attention to payload and how that calculates in what your vehicle so you got to take the tongue weight or pin weight of the travel trailer and deduct that 
plus the passengers and all your cargo yeah. Yeah. and hopefully you have some left over yes. and a lot of vehicles are very close yeah, yeah. there's some trips why if i'm going local i'll load it up with firewood or too much stuff <laughs> and i'm probably right there but if it's fine it pulls it fine yeah. If we're going to Lake Placid, if we're driving up and we know we're going up and over mountains, like I've mentioned, we definitely keep the weight very, very low in here. Um, you know, if, if we're going down the road, if we're going to Turkey Swamp, you know, one of our favorite campgrounds locally, um, we, we'll load it up. It's like 15 minutes down the road. So we pack it based on where we're going. Too. And Turkey Swamp Park, that's a great local county yeah campground that has pulled through sites a lot of first-time rv owners that have that anxiety they'll lose sleep for weeks thinking about backing into the campsite yeah. for the first time well they're all pull throughs so yeah. was, you know it's a little tight quarters there uh, but you're able to pull right in and, and and at least enjoy the trip and not have to lose sleep about it and maybe next time you'll think about backing in <laughs> to the next site yeah. so just to, to wrap this up you know this is a jayco Eagle product. Why did you choose this over maybe some of the other brand try, uh, fifth wheels that are on the market? Well, we did luckily we went to a lot of RV shows. We actually spent years before we bought this. We, we did a ton of research and you know, you go into some of them and they're in the floor plan might be right, but you walk in and it's like garbage. <laughs> it's not built well. It looks like it's going to fall apart. Um, this um, has a two year warranty and um, it has a lot of upgrades that, you know, they just it's built really really well and we like the brand and also um, we had an issue where we actually had a tree fall on our camper and this has the magnum truss roof system and so we actually had a tree snap and it fell directly onto our camper um, on, right over the bedroom and through the hallway branches all came through but that truss system held it up if we had a if we had one from a different company i'm sure it would have gone all the way through the bedroom it would have been destroyed they were actually able to rebuild this and we were able to keep our camper and we didn't lose a day camping <laughs> so that was great it was it's really quality built and all the parts that they needed so this was all rebuilt with factory parts they were the person who who did it for us was able to get all the parts right from Jayco. Um, the roof everything that was needed the sideboards they had no problem supplying any of the parts and that that was big for us too because we heard nightmares about other people who needed parts and things like that and they just couldn't get them from the from the manufacturers and they honored everything this actual couch we had um they sent it with a table and chairs we had ordered it like this and it didn't come out right and jaco sent had it all fixed for us um no problems so they we were very very very, very happy with the jaco um, company and then uh, if it's okay I could can I send uh, include a link to your blog with a little bit of the story about the, the sure. trip yeah so we I came up with the name so uh, living level RV uh, so it's living level RV.com like you have to live level with your camper um, I started putting some videos and um, some posts about some of our stories there. I do have a little bit of a YouTube channel. Like I said, I'm a photographer, so I do a lot of stuff for other people, not so much for myself. So I started doing some personal projects as we go around the camper, go around the campgrounds, I film you and everybody and they get annoyed, but it's fun. Uh, we like watching them when we come back. So yeah, livinglevelrv.com and that's on YouTube too. And anything else? Thank you for taking the time today to give our viewers a tour of your beautiful 2018 Jayco Eagle HT 30.5 and it's a MB OK yeah. mid bunk outdoor kitchen. Yep. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love it and we'll see you soon. Bye.